Good morning. It's Thursday, November 17th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Cradle to Grave, Part 3, and our scripture is Ecclesiastes, Chapter 11. Just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. And Psalm 127, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. The womb is such a complex mystery, the seedbed of God's crown of creation, the life of humans. Many other scriptures point to the first home that we all inhabit. From the psalmist to the wisdom of Solomon and the prophets, the womb is sacred. King David shared how God put him together in the womb. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. The prophet Isaiah said God was calling him while he was not yet born. Listen to me, all you distant lands. Pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name. Then Jeremiah the prophet claims God knew all about him, even before the womb. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. And then Hosea, another prophet, pointed to the personalities of Jacob and Esau while they were still in the womb. Even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother. When he became a man, he even fought with God. In yesterday's devotion, I promised to deal with a sexism issue today. The surprising thing, especially for those who have either never read scripture or misunderstood what they have read of God's word, is that there is no issue. It is more a modern confusion which Paul, the apostle, clears up. It's a little humorous that Paul is the one to settle this issue as he generally gets the bad rap of being sexist. But here's what he said. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Resolution for pointing fingers at women in the abortion issue and therefore the hornet's nest reaction of women's rights being violated, it's not so much a matter of stopping the finger pointing, but pointing in the right direction. We must remember that there were two participants in creating the child. There is a father as well as a mother. Throughout recorded history, the patristic cultures which viewed women as chattel have assigned blame for abortion on mothers. It has been rather the selfishness of the fathers shirking responsibility that skews this issue. That does not absolve women, but places responsibility on the shoulders of both partners in the death of unwanted children. The law, Roe v. Wade specifically, did not change the hearts of men and women. How could it? Law only points out where we failed. But the quote-unquote law of God's word not only accuses, it also corrects, pointing to our responsibility to preserve life and protect the innocent. For you today, with all the biblical evidence proclaiming the holiness of the womb's residence, it is natural to conclude that destroying what God has created and even named beforehand as a holy gift to us is an abomination. He said so in Proverbs chapter 6. There are six things the Lord hates, no, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.